Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Curiosity Inn. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to this week's episode of this old store. <laughs> I am uh, driving around in the caddy today, having lots of fun. I have to make a uh, trip over to uh, my father-in-law's Home Depot here to pick up some supplies. We're gonna be bringing some more uh, fixtures and uh, some more stock over to the new store, getting the uh, phone lines and everything activated and uh, starting to put some paint and hopefully get the uh, stain down on the floors in that addition. Gonna start making some real progress, so follow along this week as we continue along in renovating the general store. Back at the store, I've got some help showing up very shortly here. Father-in-law Dave is gonna help me out with getting a little bit of, uh, well, paint work done in the back room. And Josh and Dakota should be here to help finish up the mudding in the back. Hopefully they come first. And, um, and do a little bit of extra work and repair around the building. I see that um, the guys have come and I've got uh, gutters on my building, which is a big bonus, a big plus. Didn't have those a couple days ago. So hopefully my rainwater doesn't uh, collect around the sides of the building like it was before. I'm gonna go inside, start cleaning up a little bit and uh, get ready for the boys to show up. Speaking of which, I didn't have much time to clean up because Josh and Dakota are here. And Dakota, you're back. I'm back with the brand And you're not falling all over the place. Oh, you got a new haircut? Yeah, you like that. Looking slick. Nice. So uh, Vertigo's done? Done and we, over with. We had like a ton of people trying to give you advice on how to get rid of your Vertigo. Oh, Same here. Really? Yeah. What yeah. did they say? Uh, you'll have to read the comments, but there's all these techniques and stuff. But you had something happen with your inner ear when you were a kid or something? Yeah, so when I was uh, 18, I went swimming one day in Arizona because I used to live there. And... Uh, like when I got out of the pool, it felt like there was water in my ear. And I was like, what the heck? Right? And then I tried all these tricks or whatever that I could find on the internet that was like, get rid of ear in the water. Or sorry, water in the ear. <laughs> ear in the water would be grosser. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that didn't work. And I was like, what the heck? I was like, I still can't hear. Like, And that was the beginning of... Uh, of the end, I guess. So you think you have Arizona lake water still stuck in your ear, like, yo, you know, years man, later? It's well, it turns out it's an inner ear problem, right? Because I went to the doctors and stuff, and they were like, "Well, your eardrum seems perfectly healthy, oh. but uh, your inner ear, well, wait, that's a different story." Wait a minute, who's this doctor you're going to see? <laughs> <laughs> Who talks like like that, <laughs> like a 1950s American well, he's, puppet? He's a, he's a doctor. I talk like this, mares. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, so he, uh, yeah, they all said that they don't really know what the heck's happening. So, but I do take uh, this medication that does help when I uh, take it properly. Are you okay today? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go check it out. Awesome. And father in law Dave has showed up. Yes, sir. Going to help us out this morning. And Josh and Dakota have not seen the car, but these guys seem to really be into Cadillacs. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice. Is this is, is this on your top 10 list of cars you'd want to own now? This is, well, yeah. There's like certain years that are like, you know, I just, I would love this. I it, can't even say what I'm trying to say. Cause it I love it is a pretty classy car. Oh, hard, hard to believe it, was, it only took him two days to get this on the road. Yeah. After so many years. See like the quad headlights and stuff? Yeah. I like this, That's, man. Yeah. It's sick. Like, they really put, like, their effort and time into, like, designing these. Like, yeah, and every chunk of steel that came out of that steel plant in Detroit went into this particular car. They couldn't make any other cars the rest of the year. They used it all up on this one. <laughs> the mission this morning, now that the guys are here, we have to uh, frame out the inside of the doorway. We're going to leave that open as a walkway, not put a door there. Josh is going to get the first, uh, well, the layer of dry drywall uh, mud that he put on there to repair it. That's going to get sanded down. Then hopefully Dave can help me out with painting. Uh, Dakota, we need to finish up the ceiling, the coffered coffee ceiling that we were working on the other day and to trim out the door. At some point, if there's time in the next day or two here, we have to um, try and close off the soffits so that um, squirrels and who knows what else don't get in here over winter. Uh, so lots of work to do. And I've got to unload a trunk full of oddities and get some of the front cabinets set up today. Lots to do. 
but we're gonna get cracking. Okay, so first things first, this is all debris that came from when they were pulling, repairing the hole in the roof up there. Oh yeah. Oh, That's all fixed now. Um, so this is basically, the workspace needs to be cleaned up so that the debris doesn't get back into mud or into right. paint. Right. Um, and then after that's done, these boards are going to go on the inside right here, just so we can trim oh, it out. Okay. You can see they use foam insulation, which is good. Yeah. Previous owners insulated with foam. That's all right. But huh. we need to, uh, right. we might have to rip these boards down a bit cause it'll probably stick out, but they have to go all the way around <laughs> just to trim that right out. Okay. That's the uh, that's the mission, I guess. First, if you're up to it, yeah. uh, debris removal and then uh, trim it out. And while you're working on that, Josh is going to be sanding, um, and I've got to. I'll see if Dave can help me unload my car. But uh, thanks very much for coming out today, too. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Yeah. And today I set up my oddities cabinet. Now, for the most part, we carry um, you know automotive, uh, antique, and historical items, but we have a small selection of things that I would consider oddities. Um, whether it's bones or prehistoric items or sometimes just really strange and unusual objects, um, we have a little bit of that. So I'm going to bring those in today and get those set up. And I don't know what's in your trunk, but I've got quite a variety of oddball stuff in here. Good, <laughs> Good thing I didn't get pulled over. The police would have no idea that I'm an antique dealer. They're Maybe. driving around in a 64 Cadillac with, you know, like skulls and masks and stuff. It looks like I robbed a grave or something happened here. Uh, but yeah, we're going to offload this and get it set up in a showcase. <coughs> Fitting that I have a murder of crows hanging out in front of the store, considering I'm doing the oddity creepy case today. There is kind of a certain way that I want this to look. It has to look almost like you're visiting the, uh, either a Victorian guy's house that's got the pipe helmet on. Uh, and he's been collecting weird stuff or visiting the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. Either way, I want people to come in and think it looks really cool. So I'm taking my time with the decorating, trying to put uh, some interesting objects all together and we'll see how it comes out. So what makes the display of Oddities case? Well, a 1920s taxidermied alligator that we picked up in Prince Edward Island. We've got the petrified bison skull the Colombian tribal necklaces and accoutrement, the tiger skull ashtray from the 1800s, and then uh, some religious artifacts. That's Mother Teresa, of course. And we've got some fossils down in the bottom. So just some unique, interesting art and items that, uh, you know, it kind of needed its own space. And now there, I think that'll give the people something interesting to look at. I've also decided to move my smaller instruments out of this big case because I will be getting other guitars and stuff and I think I'd like to keep the higher end guitars on their cases down there, leaving me a little bit uh, more room. So we've moved violins and harmonicas and ukuleles and smaller stuff into this case here. Just buys me a little bit more space and then I can go and uh, get some more guitars, and fill up my music area. One item I need to get restrung and repaired is this old uh, Rickenbacker electric guitar. Now, it's not the Pi Pan, which was the very first guitar made, but this is a 1920s electric guitar. It's a lap steel. It still has the, uh, the form of a regular guitar, the violin kind of body. Later steel guitars sometimes are more square. Uh, really interesting piece. It's uh, a form of Bakelite that it's made from with the chrome. I uh, ended up getting two of these. And uh, that, that one's gonna get repaired and hopefully put back into use. Back to the shop, switching out vehicles. Cadillac couldn't fit a table. Well, probably could, but I'm not gonna. So we're using the ambulance now for the rest of the load for today. Uh, and then hopefully by the time we get back, we'll be ready for paint. So we're back at the new location. Dakota is sweeping up, making it look all snazzy. Uh, what's left to do with the drywall? Nothing. Paint it. Paint it? Prime it, paint it. Okay. Love it. All right, and uh, you said we're almost done this, but we ran out of insulation. Yeah, just another package, another, I think, 12 pieces. Okay, uh, do we have, we have enough uh, coffee bags, though? We have just enough, it looks like. We okay. counted them, we needed 20 pieces when we, when we counted them, and I think we have 20 pieces. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, all right, I have to offload my car. There's a guy meeting me here any minute with some signs, old gas station signs, oh, cool. and we'll go for lunch. Uh, in the meantime, though, uh, if you have a chance, Josh, yeah. 
we need a piece of um this is just sitting here but we need a proper piece of plywood cut to cover that hole sick uh, have... yeah it's in the garage okay there's one in the garage we're good easy yeah oh, sweet okay thank you <laughs> okay so i noticed that we have the trim on the inside um you had to rip it though right yeah uh well yeah so ripped uh this end on the side and then we had this fancy yeah the little angle little angle cut yeah and because the floor the new subfloor or the floor is higher right than the old one so we did a little angled piece of wood so people wouldn't trip right and uh for wheelchair access too so people can roll up that way Looks good. um i'll have to probably if i need to go get insulation i should probably go and get some kind of trim to go around here too it could oh, even just yeah. be wood yeah you could yeah put like two inches or whatever Point yeah around. like uh two inch by one yeah. two by one by eight or something like that yeah, you could. You could. Yeah, okay uh all right so you are he's working on that so i'm gearing up to offload my vehicle and i had some guests arrive with some really neat stuff that they'd like to sell at the new spot and i figured why not have a look let's uh, see what they brought in two what they call porcelain enamel so signs you can tell these ones are a little bit older because they say imperial do they both say imperial or just They're one both identical they okay one on each side of the they, they came off the same building or yep Okay. Yeah. When they did the Renaults, they, they both came off the post. Yeah, well, it hasn't been an Imperial SO dealer in quite some time. Okay. And of course, SO, the acronym for Standard Oil, is what that is. 1964 is when they were erected. 64, okay. Uh, and then you brought some other things in. Your dad was an MP, you said. Yes. And that's his sewing kit, his military sewing kit. Well, I don't know if it was his or not. He but just, he brought he it back. He was an MP, so he, he was a guard okay. for some time, so he collected some of this. Okay, yeah. Stuff from his prisoners. Is this shoe polish? No, that's oh chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, it. that is chocolate, of course. Never been opened. I and the belt buckle and the bayonet, of course. So he would have got these from prisoners, probably. Yes. Wow, he took the prisoners' chocolate. Yeah. What a guy. Yeah. Well, I. Well, they weren't. They didn't need it. Germans are known for chocolate. Yes. Uh, of course, a German bayonet, dress bayonet, the shorter one. We got their iron cross with the 1939 on it. 1813 on the back, I do believe. 18, yeah, 1813, yeah. 1939. Pocket this, watch. That is my was my uncle's actually. This is a different batch. This okay. is just another little sewing kit. I haven't got a clue where it's going. Okay. And that's a nice slim little wall from there. Yeah. That's... Okay. Well. Oh. Well, these I don't know what. These are the ones I I couldn't find these yesterday. It, okay, yeah, like oh. his uh, his bar with his yeah. uh, metals. And so you're not in interested in hanging on to any of this stuff? Not really. We're trying to move. Oh, for... We're moving into a fifth wheel. Okay, so excess stuff has got to go. I had to run out to get some more insulation so we could finish off the uh, coffee bag ceiling. Also got some uh, SPF that we could use to trim out the door frame. It doesn't have to be fancy, it's an industrial kind of space. We have the supplies back, and we'll get cracking on getting that finished up. We got the uh, bag of insulation, the last bag of insulation. Uh, so while the guys are working back here, I'm gonna go uh, up to the front with Dave, and I have to start getting um, the rest of that carpet tacked down in the front, start getting some of the display set up and really make the front of the store feel like a wow, like a wow experience when people walk in. And it'll be that hopefully soon. Carpet is in, there's a table in place. Decided to tuck it underneath the uh, front here just to pin the corners down. I have to straighten out a tiny bit here, just so it doesn't stick out. You don't want anybody tripping. And I've got carpet tape. Um, apparently it's okay to use on hardwood. That'll stick this carpet down a bit better, so. That'll be next for me, and then I can start decorating the front area. But the idea was, when you walk in, you have the table with some showpiece items, what they would call in retail the A spot. And uh, you want your sight lines to be lower in the front, higher in the back, so that your eye is drawn in and up into the other goods. And uh, that's just what we're doing here. Thanks for your help, Dave. Hey, no worries. The stuff I'm using is this two-way carpet tape now. They say you can stick it on your hardwood floor and it won't cause any damage. So I'm going to trust them that they've done their product research and uh, give it a go because I don't want people tripping on the carpet if it gets rolled over like it is now. So I'm going to lay a strip basically all the way around the outer edges, make sure it's nice and straight, and hopefully that'll be in place for a while. 
on there nice and good. Make sure it's adhered and then you take your uh, top portion off and your carpet should stick right to it. Just have to get the little tape off here. Now to carefully lay the carpet down on top of this little tack strip here. And this will prevent it from moving around so that nobody trips in my store. And so that if somebody has a wheelchair, they can wheel over it with relative ease. Just try to be as considerate as possible and as safe as possible. And the two lamps that I brought over, um, I'm gonna try and set up right behind the table to kind of create a little effect there when people walk in. Uh, do have to uncover that electrical outlet that's underneath the carpet, but I'll do that once I figure out where they're going. Um, these guys are gonna get set up and then I'll be able to put the old Model T on display and hopefully this will look really neat. Now, although the carpet is an authentic Turkish carpet, probably was fairly expensive when it was new, I only paid it 40 bucks for it. Um, somebody was gonna throw it out. I said I'd rather give you some money for it, I can use it, and so $40, here it is in my store, which is why I'm going to do something to it I wouldn't normally do to an expensive rug. I'm going to cut it. Right in this area here is my brass plate um, with my electrical outlet on it, and I'd really like to be able to uh, use it, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim around it uh, tape the corners down so I can access it. I mean, the other thing I could do is run a cable underneath, but then that's messy. You got a cord coming up and around and there'd be a bump in the floor. So uh, as much as it's not ideal, probably, uh, to cut a nice carpet like this and you watching at home might want to uh, hide your eyes, I am going to make a little mark here um, and reveal that brass plate. A short time later and voila! There is my plug. I'm gonna trim all this back and get that in place. The reason why it's here, and now part of me would have liked to have seen that right in the middle, but the spacing is correct for the distance of the cabinets and to the front door, so I had to live with it being a little off-center, but it will do the trick and I can access these panels now without having to run cables all over the place and, and cause a tripping hazard. So uh, I'm gonna get that tacked down with the same tape and then uh, get my light set up. <laughs> Spotlights are in place. Might end up moving that big one somewhere else down the road, but it's fine for now. Got the little guy here, kind of shining like a movie light onto this really cool uh, third scale race car that we've got with a vintage wall, four cylinder engine. That's a real motor, folks. It actually does work. This is a one of a kind piece built by an artist in Las Vegas for us, but um, it's outstanding. So nice thing to have, uh, you know, when you first walk in the door. Really cool piece like that. I've also removed the glass the other day from this display here. And I'm using these old butter crates so that I can merchandise items inside and uh, put something on top on display, put other things around it. Um, did it on both sides there. So I'll be able to merchandise those cabinets on another day, but they'll be ready for us soon. Josh and Dakota. Dakota is doing the edging. Josh is doing the rolling. Uh, starting to lay on the coat of paint. I picked this color because it looked like it was straight out of the 50s. And this back part here is going to be automotive stuff. So there's the sign uh, that I bought off those folks that came earlier with their truck. Um, so because it's going to be gas pumps and die cast cars and pinball machines, I thought this was a fun color to kind of offset the space. Plus, I think it looks cool with the uh, coffee bag ceilings. I think it looks neat. There's gonna be wooden shelves that run all along this wall, so you won't really see much, but it'll be a nice splash of color behind it all. Um, I'm hoping that by the end of the day, I'll be able to start laying some stain on this floor. And yes, I'm keeping the plywood as my finished floor because it's an industrial sort of space back here, like a loading dock. It doesn't have to look fancy. The guys are heading out. Dave is helping me. Well, actually he's doing pretty much all the rolling that didn't get done by Josh and Dakota. Um, I have, I was just pointed out by Josh that he put a secret surprise up in my ceiling with all these coffee sacks up here that he had a special stencil made whoop, right there. <laughs> that's his artist's name. That's his handle. So you can look that up online. That's how you find Josh's art. 
and I think he did a good job. It actually blended right in, didn't even notice it. Um, I am staining the floor this dark walnut color, which is gonna be pretty dramatic um, compared to, you know, the, the lightness of the walls and everything in here, but it adds some depth. It should look uh, pretty cool, I think, once I get it all done. We're gonna uh, keep plugging away and uh, get that stain on the plywood. I'm back at the store right now, my old store, the current store, and I've been going around and trying to figure out what do I bring to the new location. Um, I don't want to take too much stuff that I don't have anything to sell here, and I'm trying to get down to just basically automotive items and toys uh, in this spot, then I'll move that all over later on. But we've had some people come through the store today, and we've been uh, visiting and chatting, and uh, this lovely lady, actually, uh, her and I have something in common, and that's kind of my last name, we'll explain how. So welcome all the way from Ohio, and uh, so tell us your name. Susie Richer, or we pronounce it Reeker, back home from Archibald, Ohio. Archibald, and that's my last name. Yes. And so nobody ever says my last name properly. They always say Archibald or Archibald, and you said that you've even been corrected on how to pronounce your town. Yes, Archibald. Archibald, yeah. Now, they are famous, I don't know about famous, but they make Souter furniture, uh, right. which is distributed all over the place, even up into Canada. And uh, I had never thought that I'd meet somebody from my town's namesake, but here you are in Edmonton. Yeah. Uh, and you found, uh, you, what did you find today? You bought a little Teas set, a teacup. Uh, teacup and saucer. Teacup and saucer, yeah. Yes. And you know, I always say that I don't try and find teacups and saucers. I ended up with this collection when I bought the uh, abandoned general store, which I did the episode on. And so we sell them for $5 for a set. So um, that's gotta go 2,000 miles back home to Archibald. I should almost, uh, you know, write my name on the bottom. I should go to your town and I should claim it as my own. I'll be like, listen, my, my, your town name is on my driver's license. I need some kind of key or something. But uh, so glad maybe, you guys came out. Maybe we could work that out. Yeah, I'll come down there, meet the mayor. I'll try and take over. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad you guys came for a visit today. Well, thank you. Tonight I have no Josh, no Dakota, no hands, just me. And it's been uh, a little bit lonely here. All by myself. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get some helpers in the next day or so. But tonight I am rolling out some stain. Yes, I'm using a roller to get the stain on the floor because, well, it's uh, a little easier to do on the old for your back. Um, and it puts it on nice and even too. So I'm gonna get the stain down, and you might ask yourself, well, Alex, why are you doing such a dark finish? The idea was this is gonna be like a shop back here. So in the old days, they would have used oil on their floor, and uh, in time, the oil would get dark. Uh, sometimes they even used, uh, Dave was telling me he worked at a shop once and they had uh, railway ties. You'd think the smell of creosote would have uh, not been super good for your workers, but. People did different things back then. So we're using wood stain to sort of replicate the look of an old oiled floor. And again, as a cost saving measure, and because this is really meant to be sort of like the loading dock looking area of the store, we're just leaving it as plywood. But I still wanna put on a nice even coat and get it down nice. So that's what I'm doing tonight, working by myself. I mean, even Tom Hanks had Wilson in Castaway I guess I'm left with hands. Oh, come on now. I could have built that thing with my own hands. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be me and hands. Oh, how's it going, eh? All night. Uh, I think that the, uh, the coffee beans might be getting back to me again. I'm gonna uh, continue on, finish up this little patch of floor and then get a little bit of polyurethane down just for uh, wearability and call it a night before the well, I think the fumes have already gotten to me. No, they haven't. Yeah, they have. Good night, hallucinogenic wood stain. I'm off to bed. I'm at the shop working today, and part of what we're doing here is trying to find interesting things to bring back to the store. And I've been taking things in small doses. I've taken uh, tobacco, I've taken artwork, um, just various sorts of collectibles a piece at a time. But um, I did have a fellow come in today and he had a really cool balance beam scale. So balance beam scale is something like this. It's not something like this, it's exactly like this. You hook it up, your little tray here goes on the bottom. Uh, but what I liked about this one is that it's not a counter mounted balance beam scale. It's one that actually sits um, on the wall or the corner and it would swing back and forth for your customers. So I think this is gonna be perfect 
to put on display in the new general store and uh, maybe I can display something on it and make it look fantastic. So some neat items coming through the shop. I'm gonna see if I can find a home for this in the next day or so. For now, I'm by myself. Our friend Jeremy, the electrician, is gonna be coming by in a little bit to get the uh, plugs all put back in now that the walls are painted. I am going to be attaching some baseboard to the uh, bottom and putting on some more uh, polyurethane, some more varithane onto the floor to just get, make it so it's a little bit easier to clean and sweep. Um, and really starting to feel nice and cozy in here. Um, it's a space that, um, you know, we thought was possibly going to have to be torn down and now it's looking really good. Um, yeah, basically, uh, baseboards are next for me and then uh, I can start decorating in here pretty soon. Getting excited! Started getting some of the baseboard on and noticed that uh, a couple of the pieces had some runs from when I stained the end. Oh, I put another coat on. I'm going to let this dry. Uh, you won't see the bottom part there. That's going to be on the bottom where it belongs. But uh, we're going to get these guys cut down and in place pretty soon. But I have to let the stain dry. So in the meantime, I'm going to go back into the main part of the store and start getting some stuff put away. Because yesterday, I came with a Cadillac full of stuff and I kind of just unloaded it quickly. So I got to get uh, the old scale that I bought yesterday put up. Um, some more radios. Who knew I had more radios? It's not like I need more radios, but I had more. Um, so radios have to go up and really just start cleaning up around here. So I'm going to work on this while I wait for Jeremy to show up and uh, try and make it look super cool. It's time to put up the scale. I'm going to see if... I think I'm going to put it kind of over there behind the cash desk so that if a person was working the till, it would almost make sense that they would have the swingway scale so they could way the customer's good. So I'm going to put it right on the side there and uh, maybe I can do a display of things in the window on it. Uh, now I've got to get it attached. First thing I've got to do is find the brackets that hold it in place. There's one. These are really the key to the whole operation here. Without these, this thing doesn't work. Uh, I think he gave me the old screws too. And these are slot heads, so these are going to be fairly authentic to what would have been in there. So I'll probably try and use those again, even though they're not the greatest screw in the world. They are easy to slip out. Uh, make sure I got all the screws and then basically take this guy, probably mount one first and then uh, measure, get it in place and then uh, get the other one up. Because I want this sturdy, I'm not just screwing into this board, this half inch board. I'm going to go right through into the shelf. So you can kind of see it'll sink in just a little bit into both. Give me a little bit better grip and uh, hopefully support the weight all right. So this is kind of the general idea. This thing sits and pivots. You'd have your tray at the end, it would hang down and uh, you'd be able to weigh your goods. Uh, I want to make sure that this works nice and smooth. So I'm making uh, good sure that this top bracket is going to be lined up and not bind. Once I know that it's in place, I'm going to screw that in and uh, we can get it all put together. Okay, that seems to be working pretty good. So you could swing it out like this. You could swing it out of the way over by the window. I think that's gonna be just right. There we go. One old fashioned scale. So when I push down here, I should see it start to tip like so. And you would take the weights off to adjust it, but it is working and I can use this as a little display piece. So I kind of like it. Jeremy is here getting the plates installed. We decided to go with a more modern, I mean, you know, you could go with old fashioned looking ones, but uh, this is what the rest of the store has, is the same style when they renovated, so we decided to keep it that way. Plus they're probably all up to code and everything. They look nice. Almost there. And while Jeremy works on the electrical in the back area, getting the plug plates on, I have to run over to my store grab the ambulance, go to a lady's house, and buy an ambulance full of musical instruments. Uh, so this ought to be a pretty cool adventure. <laughs> I might do a separate video on it depending upon what I get, but um, I better not crash, otherwise it'll sound hilarious like a cartoon car crash. So I'm gonna go and uh, get the ambulance and start uh, thinking about later on bringing over some other stuff too. So I have some really tough decisions to make this week. Um, we've got the new building, but um, we don't have the zoning for it. We got the old building, which is up for sale, and I really need to sell it. Uh, and this is the time to sell it, but it's 
kind of half full of merchandise. And honestly, it's not giving my customers the best experience when they go in now because we pulled a lot of really good stuff out. Um, might seem premature, but uh, being an entrepreneur, you can't be risk adverse. You have to be able to take risks every once in a while. And we are taking this risk with this building. Um, in fact, when we first opened up our store, we were just planning on being online only. And the store was gonna be basically just like a warehouse space for our stuff. So, um, you know, I have to decide really quick here. Am I going to keep my current store open while I wait for the zoning to complete, which is gonna be probably about a month away? Or do I close for a while, set everything up, get the other space cleaned up and sell it and uh, really just focus on that? Uh, don't know what I'm gonna do, if I'm honest. I, I don't wanna disappoint customers who wanna come and shop, but on the other hand, the store ain't looking that hot, the, the uh, current location. So, um, Today, I'll probably have to make some uh, difficult decisions, but uh, we'll phone Melissa and see what she has to say, see what her thoughts are. But um, yeah, it's, it could be a challenging day today. Let's see what the old horse coach says. Pace yourself. You might not be able to keep a rigid schedule at one point in the day. A need for an extended conversation becomes obvious. Once you get past the talk, your creativity surges. Tonight, you might want to adjust your plans. Well. So where did I go when I should be renovating the building? I went to buy an entire ambulance full of guitars and instruments and all kinds of cool stuff. Definitely enough stuff in there to start my own band. If I needed like 50 guitars in a band, that would be really weird. Um, but I'm gonna go get this stuff offloaded at the new shop and uh, think about what I can do to create a better music display in the new store. Oh boy. I really don't know what I've done. <laughs> I have nowhere to put all this stuff. Uh, I guess I'll just stack it for now and figure that out later. Well, it's definitely looking shinier. I mean, for plywood, it doesn't look half bad at all. And the gloss that I put down should make it easier to mop, clean, sweep, all that good stuff. Josh has some kind of plan for around that window. I don't know what, but I'm leaving that for him. Uh, I have a bit more baseboard trim to put on, but I'm still waiting for it to dry, so I can't do that. But um, I did get, I can't go in there right now because it's still wet. Uh, I did get some signs put up on my wall. And uh, when this dries out a bit more, I'll get some of these other guys put over there. But that was the main thing I had to do today to let that dry for a couple days, because we are going to a wedding. So that'll give me lots of time to let that dry. Back at the house, I've got my lovely wife and my funky little uh, Isetta behind us there. <laughs> uh, so we did a little bit of talking about the store and the timing. And um, with the amount of work, it's gonna be a lot of work yeah. moving the store. Um, we feel we'll probably have to close down our current store um, mid to near the end of September, right around the time that the zoning uh, hearing is happening and really start focusing on moving, um, it's a risk because we don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, there's an appeal process, but uh, I have to sell the other building. It's, you know, it's on the market, we're trying to show it. And I feel like we just have to take a leap of faith. So uh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna start moving mid to late September uh, entirely and uh, get the old location wrapped up. Uh, we're still going to be putting out videos and we're still going to be buying and active, but if we're closed for a couple of weeks, uh, people can still drop by and sell me things. Uh, you just have to contact me first. That won't stop. Well, and then you also post it on Instagram, so if people want to see me. Oh yeah, we can we can mail stuff out yeah. or um, if you see something you like and or you're from in town, you can swing by and pick it up. But we're not going to be open for business at the new location until we're officially certified with our uh, business license and all that good stuff. But we do need to take some proper time to get it set up. So um, yeah, it was in the cards. I read my horoscope today, it kind of told me to do this. <laughs> I do. My mom would be proud. She's like totally into that stuff. I don't typically buy into it, but it was pretty crazy accurate today. Um, so yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching today's episode. Uh, stay tuned as we keep progressing. Uh, if you were making a trip out to Edmonton to come see our current store, uh, you better make it snappy because I'm starting to move stuff out, as you've noticed. So uh, come by and see us soon. And uh, don't forget to come and see us at the new location. We'll announce that pretty heavily once we're ready to open. We'll do a big grand opening 
uh, which we'll do a video of. Um, but we're going to keep doing the progress reports on the updates and, and renovations as we go. So thanks for watching this week's episode, guys, and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Bye.